last Sunday in worship, um, I cried out to God. I said, I want breakthrough. I want breakthrough for me. I want breakthrough for this church. I want breakthrough for all of us individually in our lives. And uh, that word just hung with me. If you turn over to Acts chapter 3, we're going to go there in just a minute. But last, uh, was it, when did we go to Florida with Zach? When did we go to Florida with Zach? No, just this year. It's okay. She's. It's all right. It's all right. Any rate, we went to Florida. It was in. It was in uh, May, with Zach and family. And I was sitting there because I don't swim. I don't. I'm not a big one for the water. We have a pool. I stand in it. You get wet. I don't like to swim. I don't like water in my face. I don't like any of that stuff. But I was sitting there watching, huh? She'd been praying for 50 years. I'd, I'd come to the realization that I can't drown. You know, the funny part is in the ocean, you can't drown. You have to, you have to want to drown. Because the salt water will keep you buoyant. Well, I'm not talking about the waves. Don't correct me on everything. She's starting to correct me. Oh. Well, sharks, okay. Well, I'm talking about water, right? So we went to Hawaii a few years back, and she talked me into uh, snorkeling. So we're on this great big boat, s s snoo s snuba diving. Yeah, it's like snorkeling with a, I don't know, anyway. He had a tank above water. Anyway, so I get in there, and I'm petrified. I am, I am, they put a weight belt on you, so you stand down a little bit. And I am just, I don't, I'm petrified, and I'm just like, I'm crying out to God first, please do not let me drown in this water. We're in Hawaii for fun, okay? And, and, and so I'm crying out, and I find, Debbie, you gotta get, I got to get out of this water. I gotta, finally, the guy comes by, takes the belt off my body, goes <laughs> to the top of the water, basically. You know, I was still, it's like, anyway, that's a whole other story. But I was sitting there in Florida, and I, and I, had, I had this journal with me, and I was sitting there watching everything, and, and I, just, I was just thumbing through it just a second ago. Um, one of the things I journaled in here was says, and this is just a thought, so I realize there's no beginning to it, maybe no end to it. Okay, so my thought went, but how do we do it when, uh, when to us it seems so simple, even boring? Now, what I'm talking about here is writing, basically. How do we write our story? Because every one of us in here has a story. How do we do it? It seems boring to us. Our lives may seem, well, maybe some high points, low points, but for the most part, we think, well, I haven't got a story to tell. Because yet, really, no one's, no one's life is truly boring. We have uh, moments that, will, or that are special, oftentimes life-changing. Those are those breakthrough moments. And but we have to start by putting it on paper and see the whole picture. It is, it is seeing the whole picture, not just a snapshot of our lives that changes us and changes others. Uh, through each hill, each valley, we have a story that is that is no one else that no one else has. They may be close, they may be similar, but no one else has your story. You know, those breakthrough moments, and I've got more in there really lined up with what I'm gonna talk about and and, and today in breakthrough, the title of this message is breakthrough. And I, I, I believe that's actually the title of my next book that I'm gonna write. Rob's got one then he said, I'll get back one day this year. And uh, it wasn't hard. I sent him to it. It was already done. He all he had to do was edit it. But he's a busy man, so I'll give him that. Anyway, uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 19 through 21, says this. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send Jesus Christ who has preached before you, whom heaven must receive until times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by mouth of all his holy prophets since the beginning of the world. Breakthroughs happen. They happen for a lot of reasons. They happen at different times. You know, rough times seem to come, and sometimes they come in abundance. And there's every one of us in here one time or another had gone through a rough time, maybe a a death of a loved one, maybe a financial issue, maybe a move, 
uh, just rough, every one of our rough times are different and just as we are different. And, and your rough time may not be something rough for me. My rough times may not have been rough for you. But they're still rough times. But after every rough time, we're in the middle of every rough time, there's a breakthrough, a breakthrough about to happen for us. As a matter of fact, I believe the breakthroughs are on the horizon. Even as we're going, as we're entering into that rough time, the breakthrough is there. It's right there waiting for us to realize it and grab a hold of it. And so, uh, so oftentimes it's like, uh, even, even though we're going through a valley, that break time is right there for us. Uh, there's a phrase I learned by a young girl uh, in Kentucky. I think she's at, doesn't matter, she's one of the churches down there. And it was in Indiana, actually. And she starts off, she said, there I was. There I was on a bright, sunny day, and all of a sudden my tire went flat on the motorcycle. There I was on a cloudy day, and there, and there I was, and I met this beautiful girl. Well, it wasn't cloudy, but I met her anyway. The thing is, is that breakthroughs are right there. They're right on the horizon for us. And we have to realize that no matter what we're going through or about to go through, that God has a plan as long as we stay on that path, as long as we keep walking that path that he's laid out before us, just like in Jeremiah, exactly. I know the plans I have for you, they're good, full, to give full hope, or whatever. That's not in my notes, so I'm lost. No, I'm just kidding. He's already laid out a plan for us, hasn't he? It's there. The plan was, was Jesus was seen, God had a plan for Jesus when he was talking to Jeremiah. But there's a way. There's a, there's a process. Well, thank you, Rob. For I know the thoughts that I have, that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace. Oh, I love that word. Don't you love the word peace? Yeah. I am falling in love with it more and more and more. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Matter of fact, it's number two in the list. Think about it. You love, then peace, joy, long-suffering, because not of evil, to give you a few future and hope. He has a plan for you. That's breakthrough. Exactly. That future. He's got a plan for you no matter what. David, King David, had a rough time, didn't he? King David, the, what I like about King David the most is his, his epitaph. A man after God's own heart. But he made some mistakes. He had some rough times. I mean, Bathsheba was not just a mistake. It was a really rough time. What he did and then all of a sudden sent her husband out to, to be murdered, basically. He contracted the killing. And their baby came out of the, out of the event with Bathsheba. Now, this is a story Rob hates. Because, see, God says, I forgive you. The prophet said, you're forgiven, David, but the baby's going to die. So I have an answer for Rob. The baby was a product of sin. So, oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. We could all go there and say there's a product. But see, what God wants to do, if that sin will remind you of that, object will remind you, Debbie, I'm like, either right now, that's okay. Stay with me, Jackie. <laughs> when, 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 when that product of our sin is still present in our lives, where we can see it, it reminds us of where we were or where we might go back to. Because David had been... It's my sermon. <laughs> Here's what, do not look at her and do not hear her. At any rate, the baby died. David sought the Lord through the whole process of the baby being sick. He prayed for the, rest, for the restoration of that baby, for that baby not to die. And he still went through it, the baby died. Now, another one that happened to is, is as David was hearing God, he, said, he says, who, you know, we say, who is this person? You know, who is this person? When, when Nathan came to him, he said, Nathan brought this prophecy to him that this man had stolen a sheep, somebody else's sheep. And when the man came to get his sheep, the man that stole the sheep kicked that person's sheep instead of pulling one from his flock. David got angry. He said, who is this man? Now, when a prophet points you his finger at you, I'm not a prophet, you're good. All that rises up in you to go, and David immediately fell to his knees. Immediately said, I begged for forgiveness. And God says, you're forgiven. Nathan says, you're forgiven, but the baby's going to die. You know, um, when, 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 that, when, that baby, when that baby went through that, the thing is, is death for that baby was not death. 
And that's the way I look at death. If we know the Lord and that baby was innocent, that baby's in heaven. David got to see that child when he left this earth. Peter was another one that went through his struggles, didn't he? Jesus, here's what Jesus says in Luke 22, 31 through 34. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have, pleaded, I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned, again, turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. In other words, he said, I'm praying for you that you don't fail. Isn't that Jesus interceding for all of us that we don't fail? That's an example that he's always in intercession for us. But when we fail, he says, when you turn back, when you come back to me, how many of us have turned away at one time or another and came back? Jesus says, just strengthen your brothers. What does that mean? That means in that turnaround that we made, that there's a something, a point in that turnaround, in that rough time we're going through, that can be a benefit to somebody else that may be going through it also when they see you get through the other side. When your breakthrough comes, is an example of I'm not living there anymore. I'm not a part of it. that. Now, that may be a part of my history, but that's not who I am today. That's not where I live at today. So we don't talk. People, a lot of people don't like to talk about their history. Well, history is a good thing. It does tell us that God's God and his promises are always true. He's right there with us. He's, every, he's, he's there every step of the way. When you feel the lowest, when you feel the most outcast from God, God's still right there. He did not leave you. And your return to strength. strength. Pick on Rob. Rob was raised in pastor's home. But Rob decided when he went in the army, Rob was going to show as much as he could how much he was in a PK. Am I correct so far? So Rob would be out there, and he was a partier. I mean, he went from one extreme to the other. The, 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 the evil that was in him <laughs> tried to manifest itself in full strength. But the good would rise up. He, he, tell, he tells stories about he'd be drunk, he'd be whatever. <laughs> Plastered. <laughs> but yet he would, the, the good in him would rise up and he would argue the Bible at the bar. But you know, a lot of times you go to a bar and listen to the conversation, there's a lot of that goes on anywhere. Why? Because the good that's in us wants to rise up in us and take us away from where we're not supposed to be into our breakthrough. To get us where we're supposed to be headed, what we're supposed to be doing. And there's every one of us have been in a place in our lives that the breakthrough was right there and we're still stepping into the problem. We're still standing in the midst of the misery. We're still the, it, it's, it's sort of like the first chapter in, in Brian's book. He talks about his dad. And his dad was being told, I'm just giving you a little pre preview of the first, first pages. His dad's being drawn to the kingdom. But he's still doing what he wants to do. Full throttle. Full. He had a, a, a co-worker that was witnessing to him. But it took his son coming into the bedroom and speaking into his life and going to work the next day. And the guy saying the exact same thing that Brian told his dad. That's a breakthrough on the horizon. And look what it do to a family. We get into those places and we still, by our own will, by our own, by our own uh, wisdom, which is really this, uh, not the right word, we put ourselves in a place where breakthrough has to come. It's there. And when we see the door open, the door swings open and we run in because that's where the Lord is. Paul was another one like that. Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 5 says, Meanwhile, meanwhile Saul was uttering threats, with every breath, and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. This guy was on a mission, wasn't he? And he was known throughout the land who he was. And so he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues at Damascus, asking for their cooperation and the rest of any followers of the way that he found there. And he wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. This was a man with, for whatever reason, evil was on him full throttle. Verse 3 says, as, approaching, as he was approaching Damascus on a mission, a, a light from heaven suddenly should break through. A light from heaven suddenly shone around him. 
And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And his only words were, who are you? I'm Jesus Christ, the one you're trying to, the, the one that you're trying to destroy, the work that you're trying to destroy. There's another one that we, in the scripture we look at breakthroughs that didn't happen. Judas. Matthew chapter 26, verse, verses 14 through 16 says this, And then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to, leading priest, went to the leading priest and asked, How much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him 30 pieces of silver. Now listen to this. This verse 16 caught my eye this morning. I didn't really, I had seen it, but I hadn't really grasped it until this morning. When I was highlighting, it says, verse 16, from that time on, listen, from that time on, Judas began looking for opportunities to betray Jesus. That was, that was the front of his mind. That was what, he's, that was what he, he saw Jesus. He saw things. He started looking for ways to betray Jesus. You know, when we get into sin, we start following the things of the enemy. That's what we start doing. We start looking for ways to sin. We start looking for ways to keep ourselves from the kingdom. You say, well, no, that's not true. No, it happens. Once you get going, the thing is the same, it's the same path in the kingdom. Once you get on the Lord's path for your life, you're looking how to stay on. You're looking how to keep moving in the direction that God's called you. You keep looking for opportunities to live the life of Christ. Sometimes our crisis or rough times are, are, are misunderstanding. Sometimes they become because of our own inability to, to reason out what the things that are right. You know, in my life, I told Debbie it might get personal with some this morning. I look backwards and I see that I was listening to a song the other day. <clears throat> and it, and it, uh, it's, it's a country song. I was really listening to it on my motorcycle. And when you ride a motorcycle, you've got to listen to certain songs. It's, it's required. It's in the rule book. <laughs> and it's a song, I think, by, uh, um, I don't think, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not by Brad Paisley, but it's by a, a known singer. And it's called Blink. Don't blink. And it's about a, it's about an ad, a, a man's getting ready to celebrate 100 years of life. And they're asking, news reporters asking, what it's been like for 100 years? He says, don't blink. Things happen so quickly. He says, one day you're six years old, next you woke up and you woke up the next day and you're 25 marrying your sweetheart. And then goes on and says, if you, if, if you blink, then all of a sudden your kids grow up to be, to have children of their own. You blink and your, your, your wife, of, your spouse of 50 years is laying in a bed. You're praying, God, take you instead. And I think about how fast things happen in our lives. I got to thinking as I was riding that bike, as a, that, that, that motorcycle, I was thinking about how, how fast something can happen no matter what you're doing. Um, I was coming home from washing my truck yesterday, and the motorcycle, hap motorcycle accident happened down in East Prairie, right down there by Glad Tidings Church. They're, they're good. I understand last report I has, they're both going to be fine. But things happen in a snap. But that's the way we entered the kingdom, wasn't it? One day we were one way, and then the snap of the finger hits, and we're walking and talking a different way. It's important that the breakthroughs are right there. As I understand, the breakthroughs are always right there. You know, years ago, when I was dumb and stupid, I should have said young and stupid, that would qualify you. Can you go, we'd be still one of those so fits. <laughs> uh, I, did, I did some things that really should have cost our marriage. Should have cost our marriage. But God, the breakthrough was right there. I heard a song, it's like, I remember that time. I remember that season. And I'm thinking, thank you, Father, for allowing the breakthrough to shine on me in that moment. You know, throughout, throughout, uh, throughout, I went, I love journaling. I, got, I love this journal. Isn't this cool looking? Anyway, um, at about 10 years old, I called out, I was in the closet, called out to God. Boom, breakthrough. He laid his hand on me. He showed me. He laid his hand on me then. At 18 years old, not serving him yet, but his hand is on me. I said, a sinner's prayer in State Shake parking lot after me and another, me and the Jesus freak got done cleaning the parking lot for the night. Boom, breakthrough. Still not serving him. At 27, we're watching PTL in our home, and, went, and, and boom, breakthrough hit, and it came in like a powerhouse. 
We ended up at First Assembly. We ended up getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, water baptized again. That whole year changed us in 1979. At 31, I was ordained. In just a few days, I'd be 40 years in the ministry. And at 31, I got ordained. 33, pastored our first church. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. That's your life too. You can chronolize your... Uh, yeah, something like that. Anyway, you can, you can look at your, huh? You can chronicle your life. So it'd be chronologically correct. I can't hear my head. You can chronicle your life. You can order your life. There's a good word. I like that word. You can order your life in such a way you go, breakthrough, breakthrough. God was here at my least unexpected time. God was there. He was waiting for me to turn towards him. He was waiting for me to run through the door. Beloved, we all have those times. We've all had breakthroughs. Jesus had a breakthrough. Actually, but he went through a rough time first. Verse 36, chapter 14 of Mark. He says, And Abba, Father, he cried out. He's on the cross. He cries out, Everything is possible. Please let take. No, I'm sorry. He's in Gethsemane right now. He's crying out to God to change the path that he knows he's got to take. He said it three times. He prayed the same prayer three times. Just take another way. You can do anything, God. How many times have we said that? How many times have we said, God, you can, you, you, I don't have to go through this. You can do it. You can take care of this. Jesus said, I have a father. He cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I, will, I want your will to be not mine. He said it three times. God had a plan. He had a plan for breakthrough. But it was going to take Jesus through a very tough time. To get us there. Verse 39, the same passage. Then Jesus loved him again and prayed the same prayer as before. You know, King David fasted for his baby. She still, he or she still died. But Solomon was on the way. Solomon was on his way. Judas, the betrayer of Jesus, betrayed Jesus. And some of us, we realize what happened. It says that he was a betrayer. He has an epitaph of that. But, you know, Jesus is a healer of everyone. I looked at it chronologically. I did well, did well. I looked at it chronologically. Jesus dies before Judas takes his life. Now, let me ask you a question. Judas died as many other sinners preceding him. But Jesus went in to where they were and emptied it out. You think Jesus said, no, I can't go? No, he was praying, I'll go. Please let Dave's play take me. Because the greatest sinner wants the greatest, wants the greatest relief. And he had just done something that he didn't think was going to happen, but it happened. I don't believe he thought that Jesus was going to, they were going to kill him. I believe he just looked. He was a treasure. He was about money. He said, well, there's a way to make some money. I'll turn him over. He'll recently release him because Jesus had escaped death so many times prior to that. My favorite part, one of my favorite sp sp spots in the Chosen is where Jesus in Nazareth had just proclaimed who he was. They took him out to stone him. He says, that's not happening today. Walked right through the crowd. That's what Judas saw. That's what Judas remembered. He's going to walk right through this. So I guarantee you when Jesus went in to, the, to seal, he was, shit, did I say it right? He, he released them all, including Judas. I believe we'll see Jesus in heaven. I believe we'll see a whole lot of people in heaven that we don't realize are going to be there. Jesus said, Friday's, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. You heard that before, right? This is Friday, but Sunday's coming. There's a breakthrough coming. You know, I was asking Debbie on the way here. I said, is there any kind of um, anything that, you know, plants or whatever that die and then they re get reborn? Te technically perennial. Some perennials do, she told me. Uh, hostas. They basically die. Everything's gone. Their foliage is gone. Everything's gone. But the next, visibly, they die. B visibly, they die. But underneath, they're still alive, and they rise back up. Uh, what was the other one he said? Uh, Calla lilies. You got them in Illinois. You got to take them in in the winter. But still, they're, they're physically, physically they're, visually, they're dead. But underneath, they're still alive. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. 
we, we sometimes pass over, the, what I'm saying is we sometimes pass over those, those things. We think they're dead. They're not dead. They're still alive. You know, huh? That's right. Yeah, exactly. And there's so many that we just sort of bypass. Jesus died, but he lived. He, the seed was planted, exactly. So when do our breakthroughs come? Sometimes our breakthroughs come right away. We step into the problem and our breakthrough arises. Sometimes we're in the middle of it and have gone through it for a while, and then the breakthrough shows up and we recognize it and we escape it, you know. Jesus, Paul, Peter all went through their rough times. They all went through the rough times. He said, well, wait a minute. There's going to be people out there say, we don't have to go through. You're right. We don't have to go through those. But when we are, we're no different than Peter, Paul, or Jesus. They went through them and came into their breakthrough. Their breakthrough was on the other side of the trouble they were in the midst of. Rob's breakthrough was on the, side, on the other side of all those times he was running from being who he really was. His breakthrough was right there all along. It was there all along, every step of the way. But he, when he came to it, he had already gone through it all. You know, when we get into the situations and we find ourselves in the midst of it, there's a reason that the breakthrough comes and what it does for us. You know, um, I shared yesterday in men's prayer breakfast uh, a couple of passages I'm going to share again for the guys that are here. But there's a reason that the breakthrough arises. The first reason, the first passage I shared when we started was Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent, therefore be converted. Whenever we are in the midst of a problem, it's because we need, we need to repent of it. Now, some will say, you don't need to do that because grace is grace and it's all covered. No, you still need to say, if I mess up, if I say something wrong today, I will repent of it. Because if she tells me you shouldn't have said it like that, I'm sorry. I'll do better next time. That's a repent. That's not really, it's not what. The thing is, is that if we say so, if I do something that harms Debbie, that belittles Debbie, or, or whatever is wrong, I did something wrong to her, I'm going to apologize to her, aren't I? Oh, I better. <laughs> but that's called repenting. If I'm going to do that for Debbie or for Rick, you know, or for, or, 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 or for Lyle or anybody, Dustin, well, I mean, not Dustin, but, you know, <laughs> but if, if I do that and I apologize, then wouldn't I do the same for, the, for my Lord Jesus Christ? When I say I'm sorry for that, wouldn't it be the smart thing to do? And he, says, and he says, be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come. That breakthrough is when it's like, it's like a, 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 in the old, uh, what was the pool up in East Peoria? East side, East Splashdown. They had that great big bucket of water that would, it would grow and grow and all of a sudden it start to tip. To, I didn't want to be around it. I don't like water that well. But uh, people would rush over to get that special. Why? It was refreshing on a hot summer day, wasn't it? It's like, it's like that. that's what a breakthrough is. It's like that refreshing day. Many times a refreshing come upon us because of, we step into our breakthrough. John chapter 14, verse 27 says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace I give to you, my peace. That, that's the peace that, Jesus, that kept Jesus on the cross. That's the peace that kept Jesus hung over the whipping post as they ripped this flesh from his body. That's the peace he rested in during those times. If he can get through those, then the peace that he's promising to us, we can get through anything. Doesn't matter if you're in the middle of it or not, he, he can get you through it. If you realize the peace he's giving you. John chapter 16, verse 33 says this. These things I have spoken to you that you, that, I'm sorry, spoken to you that in me you have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. It's a promise. We live in a terrible world. We live in a world that's, that's, that keeps bringing things our way, stress, anxiety, defeat, but yet we have a right to walk in peace. We have a right to live in peace. I have to tell you this, that over the past few years since I've chosen that path, that I think I said the other day to somebody, 
I said, I don't, I, nothing really rattles me anymore. And sometimes I think, am I just that devoid of emotion anymore that nothing bothers me? No, I got the peace of God in me. I proclaim it every day. I walk and say, I'm a man of peace. I walk, and I said, I want my epitaph, like, that, like King David's is a man of God. I want mine to say that people say he was a man of peace. That's what I want. But in order to do that, I have to confess it, I have to believe it, and I have to live in it. And so he said, he's promised me this. He says, in the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Be of good cheer. There's not anything out there, beloved, that can harm you or I or destroy the peace of God that's given us, he's given us. Because the peace that he was in in those tr worst of times, he says, I've given that to you. Psalm 20, 126, verses 2 and 3 says this, then, your, then our mouth was filled with laughter. Now, this is the children of, of Israel coming out of captivity. As they come out of captivity, they're, they're, they're singing this song, that our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. They're a very musical population, Israel. They love to sing. They love to dance. <coughs> they wouldn't fit well in a Church of Christ church in, in uh, the United States. But it says, and they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them, and the Lord is doing great things for us, and we are glad. You and I have made it through rough times. We're going to make it through more. But we have to keep a spirit about us that Israel has always had through every rough time. That spirit of gladness, that spirit of, of, of the fact that there is, there is a God, and he's a true God, and he loves us. There's one more breakthrough coming for all of us. And that's the day we turn, we see the eastern sky. See which way I'm pointing? So do you know on that day? It's that way. Yeah. The east, eastern sky will split. It will be ripped open. The veil will be opened. And we'll see our Lord Jesus Christ coming through, raising both the dead and the living to him. Now, we're going to play a song. I haven't told Rob this, that, that song, Church Clap. It's on there, isn't it? Is, is it on iTunes? Have you got it up there? I don't want the words. Uh, I don't need the lyrics. <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, Deb and I, uh, our, our Leah was leading worship at um, their church. And they, had, they said at the beginning of service, um, we're going to do church clap too. I've never heard church clap before. Now, none of you have either, probably, other than Ashley. I sent it to her. She said, yes, KB, he's finally coming to where I'm listening to. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to play it last week, and the girls told me they didn't know how to do it. I'm not going to dance it, and you don't have to either. I just want you to hear something that's going to change your atmosphere. And, it, and, and I want you to listen to the words. Don't get all taken back with, well, I don't like this kind of music, Sean. <laughs> if your dad was here, he wouldn't like it either, so <laughs> you may. The thing is, is that I want you to hear this because it's a breakthrough. We're going to break through some barriers. What, what, in, in, in my journaling that I've got there, I said, what's it going to take? What's it going to take for us to exploit, exploit, exp Exploit. <laughs> Explode. I started to exploit. Explode this property. What's it going to take? Is it going to take that counseling center, that, that uh, uh, freedom center we're building over there? Yeah, that's going to be part of it. Is it going to take? What's it going to take? What's it going to take in you and I to be different? What's it going to take for you and I to go through another break and say, this is where I'm supposed to be? Cheese, cheesecake. <laughs> There's some donuts back, but I don't think it's cheesecake. <laughs> it's going to take us being different than we were before. It's going to take us leaving. It's going to take you coming to class tomorrow night, even though you worked all day, and sitting and listening to an explosive teacher teach an explosive book about an, expl an explosive subject. That's what it's going to take. It's going to take you being here on Thursday nights for a mountain-moving service. It's going to see that. It's going to take men being here on Saturday morning once a month. Once a month! What's it going to take once a month for women to be here for the Bible study? It's going to take those times. It's going to take you planning a trip maybe to Kentucky during homecoming or taking some days off from work or vacation or whatever and being down there. It's going to take you and I stepping out of our boxes. 
is going to take you and I stepping out of our normal sea of life and becoming totally different than we were the day before. That's what it's going to take. I was singing in the car. It's the only place to do sing. I stand up here closer to the, uh, t- to the wall so that nobody hears but me. The thing is, I seen in the car, and we were coming back from uh, Kentucky. We had a leadership meeting last week. Coming back from t- Kentucky, and Debbie's resting because she had had a really bad night's sleep before. And I was singing, and all of a sudden, I just started praying in tongues. And I started to keep it low. And I didn't realize she was still awake. I would have done a whole lot of that. that she just, but she loves to hear me sing. That's why she loves me so much. It's just, I'm her favorite singer. Well, not really, but I keep that in my mind. But I'm the only one who hears recorded a CD, so I know I can tell you about it. But so it's like, the thing is, you'll never hear it. It'll never be on Walmart's stands. But the thing is, is that always, it's breakthrough. I want breakthrough in my life. Last Sunday, I stood up here during worship, and I said, I just want breakthrough, Father. I just want breakthrough. This place up here is open every Sunday. Every Sunday, you can come up here. You don't have to stand in your pew to be back there. You don't have to stand there and put your hands on the bench. Now, I want you to worship the way you worship. I'm not trying to force anybody to do anything, but this is open. You can come up here. You can worship God. You can go over there and worship God. You can walk around the building and worship God. But breakthrough's got to come, and it's going to take us doing something we've done never, never done before. That's what brings breakthrough, doing something we've never done it that way before. We're going to close this service, and we may do it more after this. I don't know.